So let's uh, let's try another one of these anomalous filling um, atoms. Uh, this time it'll be silver, and this is the more appropriate way that we should have done them anyways. You know, molybdenum before silver. So silver, recall, is Ag. So hopefully by now you know that one. It's a precious metal, so it's a good one to know, I guess. Um, and when we look at the periodic table, we see that its nuclear charge is 47. Um, so what we're doing in these ones, we're uh, figuring out what the electron configuration of these things is, and then we're going to do the partial orbital diagram, or the valence shell orbital diagram, figure out the number of inner electrons, and from that be able to figure out the effective nuclear charge. Okay. So again, this is an anomalous uh, filling one because it's one away from a filled d orbital. Okay. So when that happens, that s electron will be promoted, and we'll see that. Go back to the molybdenum video, and you can watch that in, in detail about how that's done. Okay. So the full electron configuration: one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two. 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. Now, here again is where it becomes weird. 5s1, 4d10. So notice it should be, or you would think it would be, 5s2, 4d9. But what happened is that electron, that second s electron, got promoted to the d which contracted to make the entire atom more safe. So let's do the partial orbital or the valence shell orbital diagram. So what is that? It's going to be, well, the noble gas. It's going to be krypton, capital K. And then the valence shell, of course, is everything after krypton. So the S's only have the one orbital, but the D's have the 5 orbital, so 1s, and then the d's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So everybody's cool to there. So now let's figure out the number of inner electrons. Okay? So the number of inner electrons or the number of core electrons I think this book tells us about is going to be, of course, the number of electrons in the noble gas minus the number of filled d, filled d orbitals in the valence shell, that's plus, I mean, and plus the number of filled F orbitals in the valence shell are filled, not orbitals, but electrons. Okay, so the noble gas in this case is krypton, and that's got 36 electrons. Okay, so in the valence shell, is there a filled D set of orbitals? Yes, this one here. So it's got all 10 of them, so it's contracted to become four electrons. So we've got 10 electrons there. And again, when we look at the orbital diagram, right, do we see any F filled F? No. So in that case, it's going to be zero electrons. So now we've got the number of inner or core electrons. 36 uh, plus 10 is going to be 46 electrons. So that's the number of core electrons. And the effective nuclear charge, of course, is the Z total minus the number of inner electrons. So the Z total, 47, plus inner electron minus inner electrons is 46, so we've got an overall charge, or sorry, an overall effective nuclear charge of plus one.
for silk. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions on that one? Again, probably the most curious thing about these ones is that weird orbital filling. Okay, so once you figure that out, then you should be cool. And again, remember, um, in this case, copper, silver, gold all do this one. And if you go look at the molybdenum one, chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten. Okay, I want you to know. Questions, questions, I know, no.